Texas town of El Paso. I fell in love Thank with you. a Mexican girl. We're at the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Well, this year's matchup between the LSU Tigers, coached by Charlie McClendon, and the Stanford Cardinals, led by Bill Walsh. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat Summerall. This, of course, is Tom Brookshire, and also working with us today is Bert Reynolds. Let's first talk about the LSU Tigers and their great running back, Charles Alexander. The good news about Charles Alexander is that he's a 4'4", 40 man at 214 pounds, and the bad news for the opponents is that he's only a junior. But if he carries the ball about 40 times today, you'll know that uh, Stanford's in a lot of trouble. He, he had 17 touchdowns and 1,600 yards, and he is one of the dynamite running backs, and uh, Benjamin can't score if he doesn't have the football. That's the way LSU feels. Burt Reynolds played here in 1955 for Florida State. In fact, <laughs> played the whole game. And uh, I'm sure that he'll tell you he was just as outstanding as we think he was. <laughs> I, get, I get better every year. <laughs> what do you know about Stanford? Stanford has got a great quarterback, as everybody knows, Guy Benjamin, but he completed 63% of his passes last year, which is hard to do if you're just playing catch in the backyard. And uh, they got a coach who was 10 years in the pros, Bill Waltz, and he's, he's partly responsible for a guy that uh, played for Cincinnati, a pretty great quarterback. A guy named Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson. And uh, I think they're going to come out throwing. And if, as uh, Tom says, if they can't get the ball, they're not going to be able to win. But if they do get the ball, it's going to be a high-scoring game. And that's what we expect, a high-scoring Sun Bowl here in El Paso. Lot of contact, huh? Bert? Oh yeah, that would be the end of me right there. <laughs> this is going to be, be the toughest ball. thing going. As you look down at the field at the Sun Bowl, which, by the way, has a capacity of just over 35,000 people, on a bright, clear day in El Paso, the wind goes from your left to the right. On its way to Juarez, right? Blew us over there a couple of times, in fact. <laughs> I left the ball game over there one time. <laughs> that was my first love. Uh, I, I, more as you lost a couple of players with that team that just never went yeah, back. Yeah, never came back with us actually. <laughs> Guy Benjamin, their quarterback. Walsh Line really has a twelve. I'm sorry. And Walsh really has a pro offense. Uh, you're going to see a lot of things you see every Sunday. Benjamin hits his first pass. Marty Smith. Number 88 made the reception. First down, Stanford. The great thing they say about Benjamin, Bert, uh, you can comment on this, uh, is that he really finds the secondary receiver. I don't think that was number one for him, did he? Well, he's, he did exactly what we thought he would do. He just came right out gunning on the first down. I think he's going to do that all day unless he hands off to that freshman who is dynamite. Oh, man, he is awesome. That's Darren Nelson, number 31, who returned that punt on third down. And 10 to go, Benjamin, as you would expect, drops. He throws to Darren Nelson, and he's got some room. He's got a first down out of bounds in front of the LSU bench. Oh, I like to watch him run. Something? He's pretty. He's almost as pretty as the Dallas Cowboy Chillers. <laughs> Bert, did you guys have any trick plays when you played? I mean, any triple reverses or <laughs> flea flickers or any of that? Our, my biggest trick was to get off the bench as quickly as possible. <laughs> and the game was over. So <laughs> That's this guy. Looks like Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis, look at that guy. What a what a face. Then you were Buddy Reynolds. Buddy Reynolds, then no face mask, which is why I look the way I do today. <laughs> Here's Alexander. And he's got the LSU first down outside the 30 to the 34. Oh, no, he can play. Rick. He pitches back to Darren Nelson, the freshman. Another flag down on the play, and the whole thing will be called back. Looks like that LSU defense might be fooling around the line of scrimmage and getting the cadence off, huh? Fake the blitz a couple of times now, and both times they've gotten the Stanford offensive lineman to adjust. Second and 20. LSU always done that from the Chinese bandit days on. They've always been way back when Paul Dietzel was there. They were doing that kind of stuff. They had real Chinese guys there in those days. Yeah, well, mask and everything. <laughs> Donald Stanford. There's the referee. Lines for this George. Manning, field judges, Carl Herakovich, the umpire, the e ball, line judge, William Looper, and the back judge, Thomas Hunt. Jerry Murphy, I believe, is the tailback now in place of Alexander. That's Insminger, number five. Bert, you were going to tell us why you want to be a sportscaster football guy. You haven't told us yet. 
I tell you guys, you're, I'm sitting between my two childhood idols. <laughs> that's that's oh. one of the reasons. Oh, I see. Yes. We're going to play that game. When I, when I grow up, I want to be just like you guys. <laughs> that's the reason you're here? That's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always thought you were a pretty good guy, too. <laughs> the other reason is that I want to make it clear that in 1955, when I played in the Sun Bowl, I was 11 years old. <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that... Uh, the guy you replaced in the yeah. Sun Bowl in 1955... He was a great, great football player named Lee Corso, who was probably the most colorful football coach in college. college right now. Of course, he's the head coach at the University of Indiana. And, and he, he was should, quite he, a player, too. He should have played the whole game. He got hurt the second play, the dirty rat. I'd been in Juarez all night. <laughs> they shoved me out there. They, they beat LSU, didn't they, opening game? Yep. Indiana did it. Not Juarez. <laughs> no, not Juarez. <laughs> Murphy gets it back. Remember those drills in college where they used to make you recover fumbles all day? Uh-huh. I love that drill. Well, they put the ball in the middle of two guys, and you run and get it, and the guy that gets it, gets it. <laughs> Watch this one now. He does it right, though. He wraps around the ball on this artificial rug. If you don't, it's liable to bounce up in the stands. Well, what's going on with Alexander? Is there a reason he's not in the ball game? Does anybody know? He just got the whole second unit in there, as far as runners are concerned. No, I don't know. No, oh, hospitality is always great here. Isn't it great here? By the way, Lofton, number 30 for Stanford, had 12 catches for almost 200 yards against Washington. So he plays well against tough teams. There's our guy. Charles Alexander. Nothing wrong with him, we find out. He's just getting a rest. There, Nelson, the ball carrier. Nelson breaks into the oh. Still on his feet. He only weighs 170. Stopped by Jackie Casanova. But he's exciting. He is, and he's five foot nine, isn't he? Right? Yeah, he had 190 yards against UCLA. It's a pretty good country football team. But watch him now. At 170, he's a lot stronger than you give him credit for it. He does a great move right here on this guy, right here. Something. Boom. Hello. You know, an interesting stat on him, Tom, is that he went over 1,600 yards, and he's only scored three touchdowns. Yeah, that's true. What happened to the, either the long gamers or the... He's going to get a chance. Deep for Lofton. Got it. Yep. It is a touchdown. You got your wish, Tom. Boy, I'll tell you, Lofton. Can Lofton play number 30? Uh-huh. And I'll tell you, Pat, and Bert, Benjamin threw this right through the breeze. Outside move, and now he's gone. He told you he ran a 220 once at 20.4. That's a soft pair of hands. And that's great concentration, too. 49-yard touchdown pass. Jackie Casanova and Willie Teal back on the coverage. Aaron Benjamin can throw that thing. We got a ball game. They call him Jolly Charlie. Uh-huh. One of the last of the good old boys. A good old boy. Looks like he got a tractor out in back, doesn't he? Uh-huh. He does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's got a beautiful wife. I just met her. The kickoff by Roger May. Chris Williams. Handles for LSU. Ooh. Gets back shy of the 20-yard line. Good coverage by Stanford. Always said you couldn't trust a deep receiver. No, let's run down those officials again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's identify him again. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Did you run pass patterns? Were you adept and adroit? Adept and adroit I was, yeah. Couldn't catch, though. <laughs> you got there, but, but I could get there. Donald Safford gives us the indication. Offensive interference. I got to tell you something about Mr. Nelson. He was 20 yards behind Tony Dorsett's freshman record, too, this year. On total offense. Total he offense. 50, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. I'll tell you, he doesn't go down easy either. You've got to, ooh, knocked him into the bench. He's the only back in collegiate history that's gained over 1,000 yards and caught 50 passes in the same year. Tony Dorsett. <laughs> that's right. Be careful with that. Yeah, like one. It Phil Francis. 
Off the right side for about four. Listen, I'll call him anything he wants me to call him. He's a classy guy. He really is. We were talking to some people before the game, and the grade point average on the Stanford squad is, they say, almost a 3-5 on the four-point system. And they don't have basket weaving out there. That's that's a tough school. Yeah, we always had the square dancing and all that stuff. Though. And had trouble getting threes then. Yeah, I never passed that. <laughs> Something got this fella, too. Yeah. That's the symbol of the Sun Bowl. Yeah. Eat a couple of enchiladas, that's the way you feel. Yeah. I think that's one of the Nina Bryant's kids. <laughs> how, about the, how about the young receiver, Bert, from your hometown? Carlos Carson, West Palm Beach. Had the misfortune. My brother is a high school football coach down there and had to coach against him. Is that right? Against him? He's flanked out to the left, Patrick. David Woodley is the quarterback who pitches back to Alexander, and he's got a first down. Alexander, the ball carrier. There's Carlos Carson. Oh, can he fly? He had five, he caught, caught the ball five times in one game, and he scored five times. That ain't bad, is it? No, and I think he's a sophomore. He's going to be around for a while. He's a sophomore, and then he caught the next ball, uh, time he got his hands on the ball was in the Gets Florida, which I love, and scored. <laughs> you mean you don't like the Gators? Oh, uh, sure. I don't. They were here last year against Texas A&M. Simmons, the ball carrier, stumbled after he got four or five. Steve Howe made the tackle. Speaking of good coaching jobs, the guy at your alma mater did a heck of a job this year, Bobby Bowden. He still did a fabulous job. He's a great guy, and I'm really happy and proud to see those guys come back. You know, we used to count the, if we won the toss of the coin, it was a win you know, for about five, <laughs> six, six years. Ago. It was really bad. We're coming back. He splits wide to the left, the widest man. Simmons. Well, he's mad at himself because he lost his balance, but he was he had a clear field ahead of him. That used to happen once in a while, probably even to you, Bert, because nobody hits you. You know, yeah. when you're wide open. Happened to me in the booth a minute ago. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Kelly Simmons got almost enough yardage for first down. It's third and one. Reynolds, I wouldn't say you're high profile, but I've never seen so many people in a game watching the booth to see if they can just see you. <laughs> I think it's red for The best of the CBS Sports Spectacular coming up right after this game is over. Carlos Monzon and Valdez, they're going to have part of that great fight. All right. Pocono 500, World Cup skiing, the World's Strongest Men competition, the Stunt Men competition, and much more. All that on the CBS Sports Spectacular as soon as this game is over. You do a lot of your own stunts, don't you, Bert? Uh, I'm talking oh, about in the movies. Oh, you're talking about the pictures, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I used to do uh, all of them, but uh, when I passed that uh, golden age. You know, they keep call talking about middle age, but I don't know a lot of 80-year-old guys, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling good is what you mean, right? Feeling good, yeah. How did it feel to carry the ball again in semi-tough? It felt great. It really did. It was fun. It was like Walter Mitty time. <laughs>